Okay, so I'm gonna have a go at median of two sorted arrays. It's leak code problem number four. So given two sorted arrays, nums one and nums two of size M and N respectively, return the median of the two sorted arrays. The overall runtime complexity should be O log N plus N. So for example, if nums one is one and three and nums two is two, the output should be two because the merged array would be one, two, three, and the median is two. Example two, if we have one, two, three, four, the output should be two and a half because the median of one, two, three, four is two plus three. Well, it's the average of two and three in the middle, uh, which is 2.5. Okay, constraints nums one length equals m, nums two length equals n. M is between one and a thousand, n is between one and a thousand, zero and a thousand, and m plus n is between one and two thousand. So there's at least one number in one of the arrays. And the numbers can be from minus 10 million to 10 million. Okay, so the obvious way to do it would be to build the merged array um, by creating a new array and then looping through the values of the first of the given arrays and putting them into that merged array. Then we could go straight to the center in the case of an odd number or the center two numbers in the case of an even number and uh, return the value like that. But because of the time complexity, I don't think they want us to do that. So here's how I'm going to do it. Okay, so I've got two arrays. Uh, one is shorter than the other, and in the shortest array, I'm going to try and find an intersection point and a corresponding intersection point in the longest array. Now, when I say corresponding intersection point, I mean the number of values to the left side of the intersection point in the short array. I want a similar number of values in the right side of the long array. So I want to keep moving this intersection point until I get to a point where the set on the left in both arrays is smaller. All of the values are smaller than the set on the right in both arrays. Now where we have an odd number of values in the total set, the correct answer is going to be the maximum of the two values to the left of the intersection points in both arrays. So in this case, it's 13, where we have an even number of values. It's going to be the maximum value in the left hand set, the average of that and the minimum value in the right hand set. So in this case, it's the average of 13 and 14. So the answer will be 13 and a half. OK, so to work out intersection point two, I need to keep the intersection of the second array uh, a similar distance from the center as the intersection of the first array. So the complication, I was originally thinking that we could, we would keep the intersection point the same number away. So intersection point two, the same number away from the end as intersection point one is from the start, but it gets awkward when we have a, very different length array. So in this example, we are moving two places. We can't be just two places from the end of array two here. So we need to make the calculation using the total numbers and getting it away from the center to balance both sides. So the only other thing to think about is how we find the intersection point. Now I can do this with a binary search. So we start off uh, with a start at the beginning and an end at the end. And then we take the intersection point in the center. If we decide we want to move the intersection point to the right, uh, then I move the start position to one position to the right of the right and repeat the whole thing again. If we want to move the intersection point to the left, then I move the end position to one position left of the current intersection and we home in on the value there. Okay, so I'll just return minus one to 
fix the error. Uh, now the first thing I'm going to do is work out which of the arrays is shorter. Uh, I want nums one array to always be shorter because that's the one I'm going to binary search on. Uh, so if nums one is currently longer than nums two, I'm going to swap the arrays over. So if nums one length is greater than nums two length, then temporary buffer is nums one. Nums one is nums two, and nums two is the temporary buffer. So that's swapped them over. So I know nums one is now the shortest array. So I'm going to do a binary search on nums one. The start position of the search is going to be zero and the end is going to be nums one length. Now while start is less than or equal to end, I'm going to work out the intersection point in array one, which is going to be start plus end over two. And then I'm just going to think about the binary search. If we want to move left, if we want to move the binary search window to the left, I need to make end I1 minus one. If we want to move the window to the right, I want to make start I1 plus one. If the window is in the right position, we want to calculate the answer. Uh, and then if we do end up moving the window left or right, it will loop back round and carry on searching there. Now I need to calculate intersection point two. Index two is nums one length plus nums two length plus one divided by two minus I one. And that is the intersection point of array two. Now I'm gonna get the values left and right left one is nums one at i1 minus one and right one is nums one at i1 and similarly left two and right two are the values of nums two at intersection point two to the left of it and to the right of it. Now if we go off the edge I'm going to have to say if if um, intersection point one equals zero then I'm going to return integer min value. So integer min value is going to be less than anything in the way so it's always going to be less than any value and similarly, if i1 equals nums one dot length, I want to return integer max value. So if we get to the end of the array, everything to the right is greater. Uh, same thing on here. If i2 equals zero, return integer min value. And if i2 equals nums2 length, return integer max value. Okay, now when would I want to move left and right? Okay, at this point, left one is 11, right one is 13, left two is 14, and right two is 17. Now I need to move the window to the right because left two is greater than right one. To move to the right, I need to move to the right if left two is greater than right one. 
and I'll need to move to the left if left one is greater than right two. So the only thing left to do is calculate the answer. Now this is different based on if there's an odd number or an even number. So if nums one length plus nums two length mod two equals zero, then there's an even number, else there's an odd number. Now the odd number was simplest. The odd number was just the maximum of the two left values. So here we return math.max of left one and left two. Now in the case of the even number, we wanted to return the average of the maximum number on the left and the minimum number on the right. So that's the maximum number on the left. That's the minimum number on the right. We're going to add them together and divide by the double two. make sure the brackets are right and if we get to the end I'll just return minus one although it did say we were given two sorted arrays so I think we can assume that they're sorted and we're not going to have a problem uh, let's try nums one one three and nums two two And I'll just system out print line that. And we hope the answer is two. Yep, two now. Um, yeah, um, I'm pretty confident that that's working. Um, I can't think of corner cases. There can be negative numbers, but I don't see how that's gonna affect things. Uh, it should be efficient in time because we're doing a binary search on the shortest array. So I'm going to submit that and see how it does. Okay, run the test cases. Accepted, one, three, two. The other one was one, two, three, four, two and a half. So simple test cases there, but let's submit it and see if it trips up on something more. No, it's fine. And one millisecond. Um, yeah, it's as good. I, I imagine a lot of people there were combining the array because it wouldn't be very inefficient. But they did say about the time complexity, so I think that they were being quite strict on how that was done. Um, of course, there's probably many ways you could do that. We could have just stepped one at a time on the uh, updating the intersection point. And then, of course, the easiest way would have just been to build up the combined array and look in the center of that. But I'm happy with that. So thanks for watching.